Hundreds of wildfires continue to burn across Canada amid air quality concerns in several provinces. Estimates suggest 2025 is set to be one of Canada's worst wildfire seasons on record. Climate expert Danny Harvey joins us now to discuss this further. Mr. Harvey, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. So I spoke with you earlier this week for a report on air quality warnings across the country. There seemed to be a bit of a reprieve for a couple of days in some areas, but here we are again, poor air quality in several provinces. Are you surprised? Well, we've got unprecedented or almost unprecedented wildfires, and th this is an issue that has emerged in the last few years as temperatures have been creeping up um, ever steadily. Uh, conditions are drier. They're just ripe for wildfires. And Canada a, has a huge land mass, a, a huge boreal forest. Um, there's lightning strikes. Um, and just all the conditions now with lots of fuel and dry conditions uh, to create fires. And it's just as we've seen, it's 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 an overwhelming issue. Absolutely. And climate experts like yourself have warned that Earth's temperature is getting warmer and warmer. What do you believe is the cause? Well, I mean, there's no question whatsoever that human emissions of greenhouse gases are warming the climate. I mean, the science is settled for that. There's just no scientific dispute. We're burning coal, oil, and natural gas. They release a heat trapping gas, carbon dioxide. And when you put something that traps heat into the atmosphere, the climate is gonna get warmer. And we've experienced worldwide an average of about 1.2, 1.3 degrees in warming in the long-term trend. And then there's ups and downs superimposed on that long-term trend. Now the ups and downs will go, but that long-term trend is here to stay. What would you say to people who don't believe in the science and climate change? Well, I mean, what is it they don't believe? Are they denying what there's, what's happening around us? The, I mean, there's just overwhelming evidence that the climate is warming. It's temperatures, it's ice, it's sea ice, glaciers, um, fires, river flow, extreme uh, floods. All of these are predicted, expected consequences of a warming of the climate. And we're seeing that. So there's just absolutely no doubt the climate is warming and it's a long-term trend. And the long-term warming that we've seen, unfortunately, it's here to stay and there's more to come. But uh, how much more to come uh, depends on how quickly we can transition off of fossil fuels to uh, renewable, clean forms of energy. Okay, you say it's here to stay. So that is one of my questions for you. The earth has warmed more and more. Is it possible to cool the warming down by taking action or is it sort of, we're at this point and we can only stay here if we take action? Well, we have to first of all, start by minimizing the further buildup of greenhouse gases. Now there is an area called geoengineering, which involves, for example, using aircraft to inject sulfur particles into the stratosphere. And that would theoretically cool down the climate, but it's also going to shift uh, what rainfall patterns. Um, so there will be a mixture of positive and negative impacts. And of course, the other thing we're doing is we are acidifying our very ocean through the emission of carbon dioxide, which eventually gets absorbed by the oceans. So we are acidifying the habitat, you know, of marine life and cooling down the climate by injecting sulfur into the stratosphere or some of these other schemes doesn't address that issue. So we have to deal with the root of the problem, we might be able to deal with some of the effects. Um, you know, I mean, if we're facing eminent collapse of the Greenland ice sheet, and we might be, uh, then it probably is worth the risk to do some of these extraordinary uh, geoengineering things. 
but the primary focus has to be on reducing emissions, making the transition to the carbon-free economy as rapidly as we can. Okay, interesting. So what is the solution and who can make those changes if we were to take action right now? Well, it really requires actions from individuals in the choices of um, the cars we buy, the food we eat, the things we buy, um, but then municipal governments, which have uh, a role on car use, on buildings, uh, permits, um, all the way up through provincial governments, federal governments. So it's really, it's an all hands on deck and all of the above type approach. You can't just pick and choose what we do. We need everybody doing everything uh, that they possibly can. If people truly understood the gravity of the situation, they would be demanding strong action uh, from all levels of government. What do you think is going to make people demand it? How far do you think this has to get? Well, okay, so what we need to do in Canada, we need to, I mean, we're at an opportunity right now with the, you know, the reorientation of our economy uh, as a result of the tariff threats from the U.S. I mean, I think amongst the national projects that are current, apparently now being considered an east-west transmission grid. I mean, Canada is among all countries in the world, probably best placed to make the transition to renewable energy, a mixture of hydro, wind, and solar, some geothermal. The problem is there are entrenched interests, existing oil and gas interests, and they want to hang on as long as they can. And they still don't see that what they need to do is make the transition to renewable energy countries. I mean, we have to wind down the oil sands operation. We have to wean ourselves off of oil and gas. Interesting. Now, are you anticipating any easier wildfire seasons in the future? Or would you say this is our new normal? Well, there's going to be ups and downs. I mean, it was pretty bad two years ago. It wasn't so bad last year. Um, it might be okay again for another two or three or four years or five years, but the long-term trend is upward and it's going to continue upward for a few decades before we get things under control. And in the meantime, there's going to be lots of ups and downs superimposed on that overall warming. So let's hope we get uh, a reprieve next year and two years, three years. Of course, the other thing is we can improve our ability to, to battle these fires, preparedness, um, have more resources ready. So, um, I mean, we're being warned that, you know, things are, are going to be tricky, but we're also being warned that long term, you know, there's all sorts of nasty things happening as the climate overall warms up. Danny, we appreciate your insight today. That's Danny Harvey, climate expert and professor at the University of Toronto. Thank you.